Oh, hello. Hello, mate. No, no, don't worry. I'm just out filming that new video for that bike fit app called Appier. You buying a new bike today? I bet you are. Nah, don't worry about bike fit. So what are you getting? S works, nice. What are you getting, 56? Nah, mate, you don't need 58. Get the 56, because smaller frames are much stiffer. You're going to get the one-piece aero handlebar as well. Adjustments. Now, don't worry about the adjustments, because the bolts are just going to make you heavier and slower. Get the 56, get the one-piece integrated bar and a stem. <laughs> the adjustments, don't need that. And slam it. What do you mean, what, slam it? Um, slam it is when you basically put the stem all the way to the bottom on the frame, so it's low and as aggressive as possible. Why, Why is low quicker? Well, of course there's low, low's quicker, innit? It's what F1, car, F1 cars are low and they're quick, aren't they? You can get the deep wheels as well. Yeah, get the, no, get the deepest ones you can get. At least 60s. Yeah, get them. Tires, pump up as hard as you can, because it's faster. Yep, frame stiff, tire stiff, all that. And then when you hit the bumps, you're going over in a race, you know, you hit the bumps, it makes you feel alive. Yeah, don't worry about it, mate. This, this, this video, you won't need to watch this. Just slam it. All right, tell the lads I said hello. Take care, bye-bye. Sorry, it was just a friend getting into cycling. The path to fulfillment and speed and performance, it's not tires, it's not aerodynamics, it's not nutrition, it's not maltodextrin, it is Comfort. Comfort equals power. It doesn't matter if you're a noob, doesn't matter if you're a COVID baby who's just got stuck on an S-Works with no adjustability, no adjustable handlebars. It doesn't matter if you're Jonas. Comfort is the key to going fast, long and hard. I've always said bike fit is the most important thing before aerodynamics, all this crap. So it caught my attention when a company approached me to review their bike fit app and these guys got in touch with me. They're a Norwegian company. They've got a very slick looking app. Can it replace the human touch, the human experience of bike fitting? Uh, no, but it's a very, very, very good tool to get you halfway there, more than halfway there. I would say 85% of the way there if you're a complete noob or you're a high level cyclist who wants to experiment. So I've been cycling road bikes seriously for about 13 years now and before that I was kind of a keen mountain biker and just never cared about bike fits. It's been about six or seven years since my last professional bike fit. People are asymmetric. I've got a much longer leg on one side skeletally, not just functionally, than the other and I've got one foot way bigger than the other. So before we get into this video there's nothing that can replace the human touch when it comes to bike fitting. However, there are certain times where I think getting across 10 or 15 years of cycling experience, uh, injuries and niggles to your bike fitter in a quite high value, high pressured studio in an hour slot or a two hour slot is quite difficult. And there are times where you might want to do more of your own research at home. A third of you waited between two and six weeks for a bike fit, professional bike fit, and 15% of you waited more than three months for an appointment. The reason why I like this app is that you can change your bike fit depending on your event you're doing. Whereas sometimes, even if you go to a high-end bike fitting studio, they'll plonk you on a static jig, with the bike horizontal, no matter if you're doing a road bike TT or the Hope route, and set you up in the same position. Now, I like to change my bike fit depending on the type of riding. So I have a different bike fit completely if I'm doing a flat road bike TT to, to doing something like the Fred Witten or the Oat route or something like that. There is a price associated with these bike fitting sessions. Now each session, each bike fit, I think the current price is $22.99. Now full disclosure, Appier gave me my session for free as a kind of beta tester, but I did a full ball review on it, uh, warts and all. Now to catch it out and to try and find the resolution of how accurate the app is, I actually made my bike fit incorrect in my first session. I started off with my road bike TT position, which I know is extreme. I can't hold that for very long, and I wouldn't ride it for a big kind of all-round hilly, rolling 100k you know road ride. But I, I ride a very long stem on that. It's 135 mil stem, and I only do that to get my forearms flat um, to the bars, flat to the ground, which is the known fastest position for me. But it's not sustainable, and that long reach when I'm riding just uprights on the hoods is not sustainable. It gives me like upper neck back pain 
But I thought I'd start with that, and that's how the bike was set up first. And I wanted to see if it would pick that up and say that was wrong. <laughs> first thing you do when you download the app, obviously pay the price, and we'll come to that in a minute, subscription model, and how I think they need to change that slightly. It's in my recommendation at the end. So you pay your bike fit session, you enter the kind of rider profile page, tell it what kind of rider you are, what kind of riding you're doing, how much you ride a week. And apparently all these different entries do go into the recommendations of your, your angles, which are detected by the motion tracking. After that, you have a quick mobility test to see basically how flexible you are. And this is very, very basic. You know, a human bike fitter will do a lot more than this. I scored A, which means I'm basically Karma Sutra level flexible and I am, okay to ride in aggressive position and do other things in aggressive positions as well. If you're less flexible, these results directly feed into the bike fit calculations and predictions that it suggests to you later on. When you do all these videos, you're basically standing in front of your tripod at home. So it's very, very easy to set up. You don't even need a tripod. You just set up on a window ledge, buy a coffee cup or something. All you need is the camera to stay relatively still. You need pretty good light. And the more contrast you can get on your body, the better. So I actually think wearing something like a gray kit would be best to show a good range of highlights and shadows on, on your body parts. Wearing black shorts was not optimal. So once that's done and your mobility test is done, you enter the session, you put in your current bike config. So, you know, your brand, your model, um, you enter your stem length and you start the bike fit. Now, what it asks you to do is record yourself uh, cycling for a number of seconds, I think about 10 seconds and it allows you to crop a part of the video where you are cycling at, you know, a good output power, you're stabilized, you've got up to speed, um, and you're, you're nice and smooth on the bike. However, it only asks you to do this on one side, and this was my first recommendation to app here, is that you really need to be doing this from both sides. So if, like me, you've got quite a big leg length discrepancy, which has been medically proven, you actually, I would suggest, set it up for your shorter leg side. So that is the side you're probably gonna have troubles for, if you've got a leg length discrepancy, you will probably want to adjust the saddle to be on the lower end of the spectrum for the shorter leg. So shoot the shorter leg. I also think they need to set up a plane from the back as well to look at the hips and how stable they are and, and do some knee tracking as well. But I've relayed that all back to them and I think they're going to get that implemented. So after you filmed yourself, it will give you an analysis based upon all the averages and uh, it's AI of your knee angle, hip angle, shoulder angle, all that stuff. And as you can see here, for this long stem setup, which was my stage one of the fit, it suggests it's not optimum. It says that my shoulder angle between my upper arm and my torso is too stretched out. And I can kind of vouch for that. It looks like it is and it feels like it is. But like I said, I wouldn't often ride in this position for a general all road ride. So seeing as I have my normal stem, which I normally ride, I decided to bolt that on because it's actually suggested that I switch down to a shorter stem. So I fit the shorter stem, I tell the app the changes I've made. So I, you run the app again, it's you know another minute, you're just pedaling away, crop the video, and then stage two, let's look at the results. It's actually shown my shoulder angle to be decreased a bit, but only, only by two degrees. So that maybe says that actually I prefer that outstretched position. And I've moved my hands a little bit further forwards on the hoods to compensate, maybe, I don't know, but it has reduced that shoulder angle, which is good. It's still slightly out of the green range. However, that's what I'm comfortable with and I wouldn't go any shorter. And to be honest, I don't even have a short stem, but it has picked up that change, which is really promising. Now, this is where the problem comes. There's a bug in the app, which they know about and they're working on. It's still asking me to go down to a shorter stem. It hasn't picked up the fact that I've changed to a shorter stem and I told the app I'd made that change because now it's saying I still need to reduce it to I think 125 or something like that. So there is a slight bug there and it would confuse a lot of people and it confused me. I was like, well, hang on, I just made the change. So I'm not quite sure what that's about. They're aware of that bug and that's gonna be fixed within the next update. In general, the UX is really, really good of this app. It's so easy to use. It's, it's a lot nicer than the other app that's out there on the market, which I have tried. Now, the next thing I have with it is obviously full disclosure, I didn't have to um, pay for this session. They gave me a free discount code to you know, redeem the $22.99 for the session. Now that session lasts you 14 days. It's an open session, so you can go back, redo it as many times as you like, making changes within 14 days. Now instantly, my feedback to them was, that is not long enough for a couple of reasons. First of all, any change you make on your bike fit, you wanna make it in isolation. So if you're gonna try drastically lower saddle height, that needs to be done for about a week, 10 days. And if you ride once a week, a lot longer than that, because the body needs time to adapt, right? 
Recently, I went from a, basically an overly high seat, what I thought was an overly high seat, into the right sort of seat range. I only adjusted it by about eight mil. And for about four weeks after that change, I ended up with a bit tendonitis, uh, like patella femoral tendonitis. And I was baffled because I was like, well, I've actually made my seat height correct now, but now I've got knee pain. And it's an adaptation. I've been riding that seat height for 15 years almost. I've changed it suddenly, and now I've got pain. The 14 day app session, I would be out of time. I'd have to pay for another one, and that's not really cool. So they need to somehow figure out the model to extend that uh, session for a lot longer. Because if I had three changes to make, seat height, setback, and stem length, if I had to make all those in isolation and get used to those, we'd be looking at like six to 10 weeks. The second point I wanna make is if you're a COVID baby, unfortunately when I started cycling, and I guess most of you guys started cycling, when you had a bike fit and you need to change something like stem length, handlebar reach, handlebar roll, all these things could be changed. If you've got into cycling in the last two years, you're buying a stem like this, nothing can be changed. Oh, bike fitting apps told me I need a, you know, a 20 mil shorter stem. Mr. S works, might look up on the system. Oh, that's not in stock for another four weeks. Great, so by the time you've paid for that and you've got it, the session's run out and you need to buy another session. So it doesn't really work. So who's this, who's this app for? I think there's kind of two categories. One is if you're a highly experienced cyclist, you know your bike fit is kind of within the right realms and you, you've got a big event coming up and you just want to check your angles, do a little bit of tweaking, seat setback, stem length, things like that, seat height, absolutely perfect because you can change these things on the fly at home it's not going to take you very long the other user i would say is this is prime for is a noob cyclist like straight out of the box new cyclist no idea what you're doing no idea of where you should be sat where the realms are you don't want to you know splurge on a bike fit but you've already bought a bike which is not the right way to do it go for the app it'll, it'll just get you in the right ballpark who is it not for kind of weekend warrior may have a few niggles may have a few mobility issues, may have some flexibility issues, may have recurring injuries, absolutely not for them. You need that human touch, that human experience, the experience of a highly qualified physiotherapist or bike fitter. I would say this app's probably not for you. To set up the iPhone on a tripod and get this done was literally a matter of 15 minutes. So super quick, super efficient, like I said before, Booking a bike fitter is difficult nowadays. You know, it's a very, very experienced industry. It's a long waiting list for the good ones. A lot of the, the lookup data in this AI powered bike fitting angle calculation thing is from the experience of physiotherapists and bike fitters. Now that is quote, like I'm quoting app here on that. I can't vouch for that for sure, but they do say that there is a human element into these bike fit predictions and calculations as well. It's not just all about, you know, like rule of thumb. I did say to them, it isn't really expensive and my, my viewers are all tight asses. So I do have a discount code. I think it gets you 10% off on a bike fit. So that currently will last for two weeks. I have asked them to stretch it out a little bit longer. Like I said, I think it's peak talk 10. I'll leave the code down below. I don't take any kickback for it. It's just a little discount for you. So check it out, get involved at home and everything you can do to make the bike fit quality better. So high contrast, lots of light in the room and maybe a colored pair of shorts, maybe not dark black, will get you better results. What you put in, you should get out. As I said the last time I had a curry. Right, cheers and I'll see you in the next one.